I'm gonna show you the two best exercises for waking up your glutes and getting more glute activation than you felt in a long time. There are two main keys to proper and ideal glute activation, and you might be surprised with which one people struggle with more. The two keys to getting the glute to properly contract is to first get length through the glute, to get stretched through the glute, so that way it can then contract. Now, most people don't actually have a problem with getting the glute to close the space of the back side of the pelvis off, they actually have a harder time getting proper length through the glute so that way it can then subsequently contract. A very important key of muscular activation, regardless if whether it's for hypertrophy or muscle building or just getting it to work functionally, is to get length. Now a muscle can only contract if it's coming from a relatively elongated and lengthened position. So let's understand how this relates to the glutes. The glute attaches on the back side of the pelvis and it wraps around onto the femur bone right here, your thigh bone. Now when this muscle stretches out, you have the back side of the pelvis open up like this. The sit bone is going to move away from the sacrum in what we call internal rotation like this. Now that also is usually paired with the femur bone right here moving into internal rotation like this. Do you see how that would move this attachment away from here? That is what's creating that stretch. So you have to be able to access a certain amount of that hip internal rotation in order to get a nice stretch through the glutes. Now, once they're stretched, they can then close that space off, pull this all closer together, and then pull this femur bone back into more of a relatively externally rotated position. Imagine this band represents fibers of your glute. As this opens up and you move into that internal rotation, that's gonna stretch out the glute. And that's going to provide a leverage to then contract and close that space off again. So the key for getting elongation through the glute is to move deeper into what we call hip flexion. Now that is basically how much you're bending at your hips. Now we can get the most amount of length through a glute through a hinge-like activity where the hips are moving back relative to our torso, which would be leaning forward. Hinges or variations of them are a really good way to get length through the backside of the pelvis to then provide leverage for the glute to extend the hip. Because being in flexion is the act of stretching it out and standing back up again is hip extension. A way to know if you need to open up more space on the backside your pelvis and you're limited in your capacity to do that would be if you had a limited straight leg raise measurement. So this is just basically laying on your back and slowly raising your leg with a locked out knee and stopping at the point when you feel like your other downside leg is going to move or you feel a giant stretch in your hamstring that's uncomfortable. So if you have less than about a 70, 60-ish degree straight leg raise, chances are you struggle to create opening of the backside of the pelvis and you lack some degree of internal rotation because yes, a straight leg raise test is a reflection of how much tightness is in your hamstring, but it's also a reflection of how much you can open up the backside of your pelvis and move into internal rotation. Because when you lock out your knee, that has the screw home mechanism associated with it. And that screw home mechanism requires internal rotation of your femur or your thigh bone. So if you have a limited straight leg raise, doing something like the following stretch can be really helpful to give you the ability to better open up the backside of your pelvis. So what we're gonna do is get a little book underneath the side we want to stretch out and open up, and that whole foot should be able to be flat on that book. And then we're gonna take a very slight step forward with the other side, that'd be the right foot. So that way we have the left toes sort of in line with the right foot midfoot there and we have some sort of object like a table that's about waist height. Now, Sabrina is going to feel the foot tripod. So she's going to feel the base of her big toe, little toe, and heel right there. And she's gonna very slightly bend her knees. She's gonna keep her elbows 90% locked out on that table. And now she's going to shift into her left hip, but we need to do this in a very intentional way. So she's going to keep the same amount of knee bend, more or less, and push her hips back and off to the left. Right about there is all she needs. And if she does that right, she's going to feel a stretch right here in the back of her left hip. She's really heavy over that left foot. She's got her foot contacts and she's just gonna sit here and hold this position. Breathe in through her nose, 
out through her mouth. Some people may benefit from more of a posterior tilt of the pelvis, others a more anterior tilt. It just depends on the position of your pelvis and where it's starting. So play around with it a little bit. See what gives you the best stretch of this area right here, but you should never ever feel it in your low back. So notice how Sabrina has her zipper very slightly turned to that left side, but she still has her hip in line with her knee and her foot. What we don't wanna see is this. The hips going off to that side. Now you're hiking up the right side. If anything, you want to have a little bit of a higher hip on the left like that, like you're bringing the left shoulder and hip closer together. Or if you're doing this on the right side, the right shoulder and hip closer together. Now I'm gonna show you two exercises that are really great for using the glutes properly and effectively. And you might get some glute activation like you've never felt before. This is one of the best exercises you can do to really open up the back of the pelvis into internal rotation, get in that hip, and then use the glutes to close off that space like we just talked about. So what Sabrina's gonna do is get in a parallel stance with her feet directly underneath her hips. Now we're gonna hinge and move into the left side here. So she's gonna take a very slight step back with the right leg. So that way her right toes are in line with her left heel. Maybe just a tiny bit further back if you feel more comfortable, but it should feel pretty natural. And now she's gonna get on her toes on the right and 90% of her weight is gonna be in her left foot. But the foot contacts do matter because they allow us to better shift into that hip. So she's gonna feel the base of the big toe right here, the base of her little toe and the inside heel. But most of that focus is through here and through here, right there, that big toe and inner heel contact. Now she's gonna bend both knees very slightly. And then she is going to place her right hand on the front of her left hip and her left hand on the back of her left hip. Okay, now staying tall through her posture, she's just going to exhale all the way out and she's gonna feel her rib cage come down. That's not the same thing as slouching, it's just feeling this. And this is going to stack her ribs over her hips. Now, to recap, she's got her weight in the arch of her left foot, but not losing the outside of her left foot. Her rib cage is down and she has her hands in this position. Now, all she needs to do is very slightly turn her zipper line towards that left foot. Just a little bit, don't overdo it, just maybe like 10, 15%. And now she's going to stay really heavy over that left foot and she's going to do what we call a single leg hinge. So she's going to push her hips back and she's going to lower her torso simultaneously as her hips go back. And she's going to feel a bottom position where she feels a stretch directly right here in the back of her left glute. Once she feels that, she's probably gone down far enough. She's really heavy over that left leg. And now she's going to maintain that knee bend on the left, push through the ground, and she's going to stand up, staying heavy over that left foot, keeping her zipper very slightly pointed towards the left side. If she does this right, she's gonna feel just a ton of that left glute working right there. There's two really big mistakes that people make that are really common. The first is that they're going to either go into too much knee or hip bend. Now, this is not something that you need to go maximally deep into your hips like that. So if Sabrina shows, what happens when people go too deep is they typically just end up like, yeah, they go so deep to the point where they try to maximize the stretch in their glutes, but now they start feeling it in their back because they're no longer getting deep into their hips relative to what they're capable of. So most people are not gonna need to go to the point where their chest is parallel to the floor. They just need to go to the point where they feel a decent, maybe like five, six out of 10 stretch in the back of that glute. So Sabrina, can you go to the point where you feel that five, six out of 10? Good, right there, staying heavy over that. Left foot, pushing the hips back as you drop your chest. Right about there, that's perfect, yeah. And then come up real slow. That's the other thing people will do is they'll go too fast up. So make sure you're really feeling the ground being pushed through that arch as you come up real slow. The last thing to look out for is overturning the pelvis towards the side. So remember when I said I want you to turn your zipper towards that stance leg? I want you to do that, but not so much to the point where you over-rotate. Now, Sabrina, you do that. 
and going into that hinge. You see how our hips are now going off to the right almost? That's not what I wanna see. What I do wanna see is just a very slight rotation like that. And now as you go down, you're gonna be able to keep that hip, the further outer point of that hip outside of the knee. For some people, it may help to think about pushing that knee in just 10% as they go down. And if you like this type of approach, check out my beginner body restoration program. It's designed for anyone to be able to do and addresses a lot of common movement and postural limitations and problems that we see in the average person. It can even help you, yes, just like this video, better activate your glutes. So if you wanna learn more, check it out down below in the description. If that single leg hinge was a little too challenging for you, or you felt like you needed something a little easier to then build up to the single leg hinge, this split squat would be a great regression for that. It's also just a good exercise in and of itself. So what we're gonna do is hold on to a rack or a door frame, something stable of the same side of the leg that's forward. That's the leg we're gonna work right there. Now we have around a 90 degree bend at the knee. It doesn't have to be perfect, just around there, whatever's comfortable. We're gonna feel the same foot contacts as the last exercise. So the inner heel, the base of the big toe without losing the outside little toe right here. Now notice that Sabrina's knee is basically underneath that back hip right here. Again, that doesn't have to be perfect, but I'd rather it be a little more forward than too far behind. So now she's gonna grab somewhere between a 10 and 30 pound weight, hold it in front of that right thigh. And now staying tall, she's going to exhale to feel her rib cage come down without losing any height in her skeleton. Now this is the key. She's going to push her hips back and incline her torso forward until she feels a very slight minor stretch in that back left hip or the same, same hip of the leg that is forward right there. Now she's gonna stay really heavy over that midfoot. This back leg is literally just a kickstand and she's going to just maintain that torso angle, stand up, good, and then come straight down. And the amount of torso inclination will vary depending on what you need to feel a stretch in the back of that glute. But if you do this right and you're staying really heavy over that midfoot of the front foot, you're gonna feel your glute light up like crazy on that side.